All right, I'm Jason Whitlock. That's Marcellus Wiley. That dude. We clean. Welcome to Speak for Yourself, the most fearless show in sports. Coming up, we'll tell you who looks like the worst in the latest reports about the Lakers' dysfunction. But we start today with Kawhi Leonard. All right, did you guys know that I'm a gamer? Yeah. A couple of months ago, at the ripe age of 51, I bought a PlayStation 4. Four. I feel 14 again. I bring this up because there's a video game about Toronto Raptor small forward Kawhi Leonard. The game is called Hitman 2 Silent Assassin. It came out in 2002 and is part of a series of Hitman video games. The premise is that scientists created a clone who is the perfect assassin. He escapes his original captor and goes to work for the International Contract Agency. He's then hired out to kill the wealthiest criminals across the globe. Kawhi Leonard is the silent assassin. He escaped the scientist who created him, Greg Popovich, and went to work for the lone international team in the NBA. The Raptors hired Leonard to assassinate international basketball stars Joel Embiid and Giannis Antetokounmpo. And now Hitman 2 has reached the final stage of gameplay where he'll have to take on the American dynasty led by Steph Curry, Draymond Green, Klay Thompson, and quite possibly Golden State's nuclear weapon, Kevin Durant. If Hitman 2 Silent Assassin is successful in his final mission, he's going to draw even more comparisons to Michael Jordan, the star of the NBA's Call of Duty video game series. Those comparisons will be justified. Mm. Taking this Toronto team to the finals is as impressive as LeBron James taking Cleveland to the finals. I say that because Toronto faced stiffer competition in the Eastern Conference than what LeBron did in his last four seasons in Cleveland. I'm not saying Kawhi is peak LeBron's equal. That would be ludicrous. I am saying Kawhi is the best player right now. He's better than the 34-year-old LeBron. After watching the Eastern Conference Finals, no one questions whether he's better than Giannis. Kawhi's only competition at this point is Durant, and right now I give the nod to the silent assassin. His advantage on the defensive end is more pronounced than Durant's on the offensive end. No one, can, no one gets 35 points easier than Durant, but Kawhi can get you 35 when you need it. What separates him is no other superstar can embarrass Giannis and slow every other elite scorer in the league. No wonder Clippers owner Steve Ballmer desperately wants to bring Kawhi to Los Angeles. Mm -hmm. He wants to contract the silent assassin to finish killing the Lakers franchise. All right, joining the desk now, NBA champion Matt Barnes, Rick Buecher of Bleacher Report. <clears throat> Marcellus, I'll start with you. Yeah. Is Kawhi the best player in the NBA right now? No, no. And I understand the prisoner of the moment. I understand the <laughs> dynamic. I know what's going on <laughs> with Locke. You know, them keys ain't going to press themselves. You got to write something, <laughs> huh, my dog? But can we remind ourselves yeah. who Kevin Durant is yeah. and was before this injury? Full screen right here shows a, a list of the all-time greats of our game. 34 points per game in a single postseason. Durant, obviously, on that list. LeBron, Jordan, Kareem, et cetera. That's who Durant was. But also, his defensive prowess started to really get attention. His rim protection started to get attention. Uh, but I will leave you with this. We saw, we see Giannis, we see Embiid, and we see that path for the Toronto Raptors and Kawhi Leonard. Do you know what Kevin Durant did to the King the last two times he saw the King in the finals, mm. finals MVP? So the road to this place of being the best in the game, I'd rather beat the King at that game. You got the PlayStation 4. Rather than beat up on Giannis and Embiid, who are coming, who are not there yet. Uh, we might have to come up with a Marce Marcellog because that was <laughs> impressive. No, that was well done. Yeah, Look, it's out of sight, out of mind. And I believe you make the point that uh, that KD and his defense is not given is being given enough recognition. Uh -huh. He has really stepped it up at that end. And when I look at the offensive end, he can do more things. If you're asking me who would I rather have, it's not even close. Mm. I love Kawhi in isolation situations, but he doesn't do nearly the same. And this has been impressive, but it is prisoner of the moment because it has been so dramatic. We have the four bounce game winner, series winner against Philadelphia, and then we have him going up against Giannis. But let's take a hard look at what the matchups were in that series and what Kawhi was able to do. Hmm. 
it's not, he's going up against, I think we overvalued who the Bucs were. It was an inexperienced Bucs team. It was an inexperienced Giannis. He made the most, most of that. I love seeing Kawhi back to what we, reminding us of right. what he can be. But I, it's simply, sometimes you got to get a step away from the stats, mm. from the keyboard, and you just have to say, <laughs> right. what can this guy do? What can this guy do? This guy can I'm gonna do let more. Matt. I'm gonna start firing back here. Yeah, this is a joystick right now. Yeah, this is a what have you done for me lately? I think the fact that KD has been hurt of late, now it's his turn. But you've heard it's been Giannis at one point in these playoffs. It's been you know KD at one mm. point in these playoffs, <laughs> and now it's Kawhi. But for a lot of reasons that that Rick said, I mean, KD is a proven whether you like him going to Golden State or not, proven warrior. Uh, what he's done uh, against LeBron what he was doing before he got hurt. Now, this is not taking anything away from Kawhi. I think this is a reminder of, and I've always said it, that his year off made people forget how talented he was. Mm. He's top three in the world to me. It's, it's LeBron, KD, and Kawhi, mm. uh, when it, t- in my opinion, when it comes to uh, best players in the world. But I love what he does defensively. He's able to disrupt the game like no one else in the game defensively. But like Rick said as well, KD is not as good on ball. He's a solid on ball defender, but a great help defender and very long and a basket protector as well. So if you're making me pick between uh, KD and Kawhi, I, I would say KD right now. And I don't in any way intend to diminish Kevin Durant because I'm right there as a cheerleader. Kevin Durant, tremendous player. But, but you guys are kidding me. Giannis is probably going to win the MVP. Right. And Kawhi Leonard just made everybody look foolish for thinking he's the MVP. But I just think more than that, not to cut you off, he, he showed that uh, Giannis still has some more developing to do. Right. Although he's an MVP, and I said that on the other show, he's a star on his way becoming a superstar. He's had, I think Kawhi pointed out the deficiencies in his game, and yeah. once you lock that paint down, what is Giannis going to do? Right. I, 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 and so... Of all the impressive things we've seen in the postseason so far, and we saw Durant against the Clippers look amazing, what, ya- what, what Kawhi just did to Giannis is the most impressive thing, and there's no one else that can do it. I'm yep. just sorry. But keep in mind, it wasn't just uh, it wasn't, no, no, it was a it team wasn't just Kawhi. Yeah, yeah they, they had that second defensive defender strategy. coming early. What really bothered me is Boston could have been doing all of that. Oh, absolutely. I think could have exposed. They don't have Kawhi Leonard, man. Yeah, but they team wise, they had the athletes, and I thought they had the coach. You that take could Kawhi them to play the way they need to. You take to. the Kawhi out of that. Yes, and they can't do that. You can again. Brad Stevens is no idiot. If, if he had the personnel and it starts with Kawhi, you can't do it. Well, you can have the plan, but the, the personnel it's have to execute it. But, yeah. they, but they didn't. They never came close. That, the Boston had its – Boston other, did it to itself. But don't make us pay the price for anybody who put Giannis or was blowing smoke well, I'm sure when it came to Giannis. I'm sure you voted for MVP. No, like I had everybody. Harden actually at the top of and my And he's not the MVP either, and he got embarrassed as well. Well, who's, <laughs> who would you have put at the top of the <laughs> right now, regular it, season? No, regular I season? I understand it's regular season. If Kawhi had chosen to play all 82, he hmm. would have been the MVP. But, but, but again, I want to go back to Durant and what he did to LeBron. If you put Kawhi with a two-time MVP, Steph Curry, oh. and Clay. And all that system and all that they had around it, it's a lot easier to do that. It, yeah. it is. And so let's don't – what this guy just did in the East with Kyle Lowry, who looks overweight, uh, Serge, who's past his prime, uh, Siakam, who we had never heard of, Nick Nurse. We well, never yeah, like, since on, we did pick it right here, let's talk yeah. about a Joel Embiid who's never healthy, and when he is healthy, he'll text his coach in the morning, may not play tonight, which showed me a lot about his character. I've never seen this in my years of playing pro sports. Six in the morning, I'm making a 7.30 p.m. call to tell him in maybe 12-plus hours I'm probably not ready. That's not a guy who's a made man or a guy who's on the ascend. Giannis is one-dimensional. He's playing LeBron philosophy, put shooters around him and just dash and go to the rim. That's not a guy who, who's multifaceted and ready to be the king or the best in the game. But, but we just watched the guy carry the weight, the most yes. weight, on both ends of the court. LeBron ain't doing that no more, and I'm sorry, Klay Thompson carries the heaviest load on the defensive end for Golden State. Kawhi just did it at both ends of the court. First team All-Pro or or All-NBA at both ends of the court in that series and throughout these playoffs, 
and he's hitting game winners and all the. And again, I'm not remotely diminishing KD. Right. But I'll, he at at the uh, he's no comparison to him at the other end of the court. And I get that on the offensive end, KD has more weapons. But Kawhi can go out and get you 30. The, the no comparison yeah, at the defensive end, strong. I think, is, is, is separating them by too much. The other part is, okay, so against this Milwaukee team, yeah. once you took Giannis out of the equation and you didn't Kawhi allow did him that, to do what he ahead. did, Kawhi did that. okay, <laughs> what else did you have to worry about? Say it. Who else were you having well, to deal How many to, people to, should Kawhi to, be to responsible for? I'm not saying he's I mean, responsible for all of them. I'm general, saying. Just speaking in general as a team, like you yes. knocked their first option out, who's their second second scorer, and, and they did didn't that? have that. No. I, you, you had Kawhi Un- did it. Understood, but there weren't other things that they could go to. It was a one-trick pony. Right. So he took it out, took him out, and as a result, Boston they succeed. It. Trust me, I know they didn't do it because I expected that they could. I understand that. But the bottom line is it wasn't that hard to decipher. That's damning on Boston's part. And the other part for but Kawhi in the we're postseason. We're only talking about Kawhi. You, and we're also talking about the postseason. This is the other part that I believe that Kawhi had a huge advantage. He's been there. He's done it. He's seen mm-hmm. it all. It's the same mm-hmm. as with LeBron. There is a, if we're talking about, okay, is experience or just a comfort level on this stage, is that equal to or part of the equation when you say best player in the game? I think he had a tremendous advantage because he'd done all this and it was brand new for Milwaukee. I'm, I'm going to reduce it to weightlifting and who carries okay. the most weight. And the only guy in recent years that I've seen carry this kind of weight at both ends is LeBron. But that's not fair. What? That's not fair to KD. Yeah. That's to say, fair, to yeah. say he can't be the best player in the game oh, he can't because be, he doesn't he's have to. he's not carrying the most weight. Well, it's that, then, then Clay Thompson has no argument that Kemba Walker was, was all and NBA. He Why do we got to drag other people in this? Well, because, I'm, because I'm it's it like a opportunity. Competition. Well, and that's why KD, in order to jump back over Kawhi, in my opinion, has needs to, come to back leave. To mm. No, needs to leave okay. and go carry the same amount of weight. I mean, <laughs> it, it, but it, it's really unfair because. What we're saying now is your equation based on what surrounds you is going right. to now Affect cloud your vision player. in actually assessing the individual, yeah. Yeah. which we should be up here being yeah. able to do that. I'm going to I'm gonna go to football, though. I'm okay. going to go to football. Right. I can't just look at Dak's numbers and compare them to Tom Brady's. They're carrying different levels of weight. Why can't we do the same with Kawhi? Because I think at the same time, I think all the Warriors players get diminished because they're as a team, they're so good. So Clay's diminished as an That's All-NBA choice, player. Yeah. Dray, you're right, but it's still at the end of the day, player for player, it shouldn't. We, but it does. We know, we know, no, what you do matters. But okay. he's doing what he's supposed to do, what he has to I do. I got you. But he, KD right. made a choice to go there. Hey, y'all help me carry right. this weight. But you got to think. If <laughs> LeBron made a choice in Miami, yeah. did that change no, your assessment it, of him individually? Did. And that's why when he took he, a little off his game. No question. And right? that's why when he went to Cleveland him. and said, yeah. you know what? I'm going to lift all the weight. Yeah. And I'm going to win a championship. This hey, is, yeah. I give he won four straight finals. No one Well, Kawhi went our eight championship. This yes, is the conversation that gets you into the King conversation. Exactly. He's already won one in San Antonio. But no, no, but it's different yeah. weight, oh, as wait, you would weight. say. He the was the finals MVP. Okay, he was the best player and, and on Durant's that team. twice that. Huh? Huh? Durant what? is twice that the last two years, too. Huh? Remember that? It, no? Forgot? D- Hurt? No. <laughs> he, was, he had other people. He, he had spotters. That was helping him lift that weight. <laughs> right. Kawhi is out there by himself on both ends carrying the most weight. This is what LeBron did to make himself LeBron. It was very impressive. To me, this is just as impressive, if not more impressive, than what LeBron was able to do bringing Toronto to the finals yeah. with tr- LeBron being able to bring Cleveland to the yeah. finals. Yeah, Absolutely. Is. So but why it, not give him the same credit? He's getting the same credit, but there's still someone that's better than him. He's still getting the, the way, same credit. The, the weightlifting... Analogy yeah, didn't right. work, and the football analogy didn't work. <laughs> what, where, where, where are we going to next? Where are we going there? Right. <laughs> All right. Quickly, we don't have a lot of time here, but we got some time. Can Toronto? Do they have any chance at beating the Warriors? No. What's up, man? You <laughs> it ain't gotta be. That. I ain't even gonna waste my time. No. I, round by round, I've been oh trying to build up the drama and the challenge. No, yeah. well, they was, are eight yeah. and one in the last two yeah. finals, and that was against. Arguably stronger opponents. Certainly, one time it was two years ago that Cleveland team. No, it was supposed to be Milwaukee was too deep for the Warriors. Yeah. Milwaukee couldn't even get past Toronto. I, uh, Toronto may couldn't win get a past game. Kawhi, but go ahead. Yeah, Ger- <laughs> uh, Toronto may win a game or two, but like Rick spoke to earlier again, so. experience. You can never under, uh, underestimate what experience does when it comes to the finals and the lake. Uh, the, excuse me, the Warriors have too much of it. 
Yeah, look, uh, did I mention I thought Boston was going to be in this situation? <laughs> yeah. I, uh, maybe it's wishful thinking. I think that this can be competitive. I think there is a window into it. I don't expect that KD is going to play in this series. I don't expect that DeMarcus is going to play in this series. There's some question about the health of Andre Iguodala. I don't believe that they can lose another piece. No, and so if they have to ride their horses heavy and Toronto can just stay in this, I see a window in which it can happen. Now, they're going to have to control the tempo of this game. They're going to have to do what they did to the Bucks in the last four, which is we're not going to play up and down. We're going to play slow. We're going to play isolation. And we're going to be able to pick those matchup, matchups that are advantageous and get enough points out of that. It is a tall order, no question about it. And there's some guys that are brand new to this uh, to this platform. Pascal Siakam is the right. guy that I'm most interested yeah, in seeing yeah, can he yeah, perform, nervous, right? Uh, but, but that said, if you're asking me, is there a possible, I mean, this may be dumb and dumber, mm -hmm. you know, one out of a thousand. Yeah. So you're telling me there's Anything's a chance. possible with Kawhi. It's a possibility, but I doubt it. And, no, and no. I think Draymond too. I think that's the one thing I think pace is key. And with a young team that hasn't been there, your, your, your tendency is to get caught up in, in what's going on. And with Draymond rebounding the ball and pushing it every single time, yeah. it's going to make every player maybe outside of Kawhi want to push it right back at them. You yep. know what I mean? And that's a game they can't play. I heard you say something about Golden State off isolation ball. The, the, I mostly, and I've gone this morning, I kept going back and forth, but I landed on no. Yeah. And because I, that they don't really have a chance. And, and my thought is that Steph Curry, Klay Thompson, these guys are just going to run around in circles on the offensive end. And Kawhi, it's not going to be a Giannis deal where it's, I, let me just sit out at the top of the key and shut this dude down. Right. These guys are going to run him through so many screens, it's going to affect him on both ends of the court. And they're going to be nailing them. We're going to be exhausted. Yeah. Right yeah. Picking, picking what, what, what we're losing sight of is this is a seven-game series. So basically, by the numbers, whoever has the greatest margin of error, that means you could go play Plan B, Plan C, basketball, and still win. Mm -hmm. You're going to win four games out of those seven. The margin of error is too slim for Toronto to win even one game, let alone. Four games of seven. Just think about the math. This is not a do-or-die football series. Yeah. This is a seven-game series. Can they win? And not no. to mention the rest. The rest is huge for the Warriors. Uh, Everyone, you know yeah. what I mean? These guys, they're, they're, their core has been going hard all playoffs, you know, minusing a few superstars. So the rest was instrumental for this. Yeah, and, and starting on the road, I think, is actually a plus yeah. for the Warriors. It's the first that. time, but Break I think they would be more, there would be a greater tendency to give Slip. away a game right. in the first two if they were at home. They're less likely to do that, and now I'm arguing against myself. But that said, <laughs> no, I, look, do I expect the Warriors to win it? Yes. Is it hard for me to imagine Toronto winning four games? Yes. But I'm, I, I don't think – I can see think... Toronto getting swept. This is, yeah, a, again, this yeah. is a weightlifting competition. And, and we, just <laughs> yeah, saw, that. we just saw Kawhi lift the most weight to me in the NBA. And he's impaired year. right now. It, it, it didn't look like he was hurting. healthy. And yeah, then they're about hurt. to put more plates on. We're yeah. going to put Steph on one side <laughs> and Clay on the other side. And you got to set a world record. Because if he wins this game, it'll be the most – if he won that series, it'd be the most impressive thing and I've seen. And then how many quality defenders are going to be on him as well. Draymond, Iggy, Clay. They're going to keep throwing people at him. And then, like you said, he's going to have to chase these guys around the three-point line, get hit with screens a lot. It's good. He's got a lot of weight on his Shoulders. Weightlifting uh, analogy came back. Yeah, came back. <laughs> Resurrection. Time now for a big story brought to you by Fisher Investments. All right, let's move to the Lakers, whose dysfunction continues to dominate NBA headlines. ESPN's Baxter Holmes just dropped a new report chronicling the feud between Magic Johnson and Rob Palenka, as well as LeBron's failed first season in L.A. The story features new details about Magic's bullying management style, LeBron's outsized influence, and Palenka's dishonesty, including being caught in a potential lie about a meeting between Kobe Bryant and Heath Ledger after the actor had already passed away. Take a listen. There was one time when Kobe, who I worked with for 18 years, was going back to play in Madison Square Garden, and he had just seen The Dark Knight. Obviously, you guys saw that movie. And he's like, hey, hook me up with dinner with Heath Ledger because he got so locked in to that role. I want to know how he mentally went there. And so we had dinner with Heath, and he talked about how he locks in for a role, and Kobe mm. used some of that in his game Great. against the Knicks. Mm. Uh, you know, Heath Ledger had died six months before. All right, the question here is... Oh, I didn't hear you. What did you say? <laughs> Heath Ledger died six months before the release of, uh, of the movie. Dark Knight. Yeah, so anyway, uh, the dinner. question Seance. here is... Early dinner. <laughs> 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 All 
<laughs> but who looks worse in the Lakers dysfunction? LeBron, Magic, Genie, or Palinka? Did you see that video? That guy. <laughs> Rob Palinka over there. Mm, I don't want to say you're lying, but I know Kobe got access. He is Kobe. But he got the movie six plus months before it was released and had dinner with Heath Ledger? That's a lot. But I'm not even going to go in that lane, even though that's a lot. Uh, let's talk about the fact that he had no experience to get the job then. So far, little to no success since he's got the job. And then on top of that, his reputation that was out there as being an agent, some may say, uh, talks out of both sides of his mouth, has now seeped internally to where that's status quo. Like, his peers, his, his co-workers look at him kind of with the lens of, mm, take it or leave it. And his mouth is truth. moving, he's lying. That's he, how they look at it. Exactly. So, <laughs> Rob Palenka, not so many things that were profound in this piece. Not too many for me. But that one was interesting. Like, his reputation uh, not only precedes him, but he continues to kind of validate it. Fair, but I'm going with this guy. Magic man, huh? Ooh, I... Largely because there's only one person who jumped ship from this organization. There's only one person who went on the national TV and then savaged everybody else in the organization. There's only one person who was in charge, allegedly, and was making all the decisions and has left the franchise as it is. And I would add this, and this is hard for me to say because growing up, Magic was my favorite player, mm. most, most beloved. But among the four people that we're talking about here that are the candidates, who was the most revered and who was the most beloved? Yeah. So who's taken the biggest hit here when we look at the change in how we view Magic Johnson? That's, I mean, Rob Palenka, you said it. He's an agent. What do we know about Jeannie Buss? I mean, LeBron, LeBron's already taken his slings and arrows. Magic was in this special place, and the way he's dealt with this situation has been the most disappointing and to he me. he dealt with it exactly how he's dealt with every other situation outside the basketball. And we gave him passes on all of those. And we we'll still give him looked a pass at him. Again. Uh, we'll see. <laughs> I feel like this one's going to leave a mark. Mm. Mm. <laughs> that's upside down. He on that Matt Barnes. It's legal. It's maybe. legal. <laughs> well, maybe, I mean, maybe that's how confused she is. Jeannie I, I, I think Jeannie takes a lot of the heat from just, I think it's really showing where she lacks. Mm. Uh, it's always been a family business. You know, her dad had a great run, one of the most historical franchises we've ever seen. She takes the reins, her brother takes the reins, and it's just, it's gone down downhill since. They've been the worst franchise the last six years. Mm. And I think her inexperience is showing. Hiring Rob and hiring Magic, knowing they have no front office experience before. And then for Magic to tell you at the beginning of the time, this, I have a lot of other businesses that I'm gonna be attending to. And for that, at the end of the day, to be one of the major problems of why Magic left was because he wasn't in the office enough. And to touch on what you said, Rick, I think the reason why Magic did leave is because he thought he was going to be the person making these tough decisions and, and final saves, but he found out that he didn't have as much juice than he disagree thought he had. Disagree with that. You don't agree with that? Oh, I yeah. agree with Matt, but let's hear it. I'm going to tell you why oh, okay. I disagree with it. It takes a big pair to swing the hammer that Magic tell me he wants to be the final throw. You have to sit down with people and say, you're not good enough, and we're moving on. Magic Johnson went on TV on first take and was like, and then, you know, they made, they questioned me about firing Luke Walton. And Jeannie likes Luke as a man. And he created this appearance like they wouldn't let me fire Luke. And then they fired Luke three days later. So there was nothing standing in the way. That's all garbage from Magic. He could have fired Luke Walton if he had a big enough pay. But he also wanted to fire Rob. No, no. Mm. And, and, and trust mm. me, and he, then, he yeah, could have accomplished that, that as well. Uh, that part. That's hard uh -huh. to say because then, you, then that, that's why I go back to Jeannie. Now she yep. has the shadow owner and Linda that's Ramis Linda's making friend. calls and really liking Rob and all this kind right. of stuff. So to me, at the end of the day, Jeannie is supposed to be the, the boss of everything. Got it. And the way it's trickled down, it just it hasn't reflected well. And this is kind of her last. She's had plenty of shields up to then, whether it had been her brother, whether it had been Magic, now it's Rob. Now the light is really shining on Jeannie. And, and I think her, you know, she's up against the clock right now to make something happen. I think your take is good and, and certainly justified, but I, I can't even say I really disagree with it. Other than for, look, man, Magic in his position, when you fire people, particularly at that level, it takes a lot of work. In you just don't, hey, I'm on fire. 
No, you have to write down and explain to people, get in front of a group, this is exactly why we're doing X, Y, and they're going to question you, mm -hmm. and then you have to make restate the case and win the room, and then boom, you get to fire them. But what Magic kept saying, no fun. I'm only here part time. I have yeah. other things to do. He didn't want to put in the work it's necessary to swing that hammer. That's that's what I struggle with. It's like, okay, you you weren't allowed to make the decision supposedly, but you weren't doing the work in order to make the necessary decisions. Like, how can you say I I couldn't run the ship, and then you're saying, well, I wasn't around to run it. I mean, that that, that well, that's you can say that if, if you have a, a, an agreement with an owner that tells you, I understand you're going to be lapsed from here at times. So when I do come in, don't, don't measure it by the quantity, it's the quality. Marcel. And that's why I think he was caught when he was like, it's my turn to do what you employed me to do, and you won't let me, I'm out. And it's no fun. That's okay to umbrella it that way. You know why? Because if I don't have power, and we taking losses, and I don't have decision-making opportunities, why suffer? And I'm taking Marcel, all the heat. And I'm taking the, all this the is heat. Your, this is your show. And they may have parameters in terms of what your responsibilities are to the show. But you want the show to be successful. Yeah. So screw the parameters in what I'm, in, I'm supposed to do or when I'm supposed to be here. I'm going to do what's necessary to make this successful. Magic did not do that. It, I don't care what the agreement was in terms of I'm going to have these other things. When you see the Lakers are not going in the direction that they need to go... I need to spend more time on this because I've made a commitment and I supposedly love Jeannie and I love this franchise. I'm going to do what's necessary to make this a success. But Rick, time is not the medicine for this. Don't you see how Frank Vogel gets the job? And Oh, guess who your assistant coach is? Jason Kidd. You don't see how they do this tandem thing? Uh, Magic Johnson, you're here. Rob Palenka's with you too. And then he's like, I don't want Rob. And then they're like, well, we like Rob and Luke. So Magic's like, he sees it. They, they just do this collective but, where you're not giving people their individual lanes and power. I'll go to the same thing, though. I hear you. One guy stepped off. No, One guy quit. I, I, I'm yeah, going yeah, yeah. to go back to, again, if you read the article, Magic comes in and, and makes a big speech of, if you're not doing your job, he basically threatens everybody the opening day. Yeah. He's, he's the boss. And we're setting a new tone. And they start firing people right and left. And again, if you're going to make that speech, and you're going to be the boss that drops the hammer and everybody's on notice. You have to be the person who, at least by perception, works the hardest if you want your leadership to be respected. Yes, that's the way it works in corporate America. I've been and in again, corporate America. Don't do me like that. Yeah. You can't be an absentee, uh. I'm the hammer, I'm laying the law down, but... I'm going to be over here doing well, fun it, stuff away from the office. But with that said, you have someone else's oh, reason. Oh, yeah, because I'm going to just tell yeah, you yeah, why. Yeah, 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 yeah. And I'm going to explain why. Sounds like you won, Rick. No, 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 <laughs> I, I'm, no I'm going to tell you what. No, 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 no. I'm just defending his art. But okay. I'm going to tell you why LeBron. It's because whoever has the most to lose is always the biggest loser in my, when things go poorly. And to me, Magic, again, he's a quitter in, in things that are hard and Whoa. difficult. Wow. He's a what, I, I mean, my God, he quit his TV show t twice. Come on, you're, you're, right, you're, right, you're right in all that, but that's not the appearance or the image yeah, of Magic. He runs to success. Right? No, that's fine. I ain't staying somewhere. Sorry. Oh, no, no, no. Look, man, Call in basketball before. where he's six foot nine and more talented than damn near everybody in the NBA, that was great. That was fun. Oh, he didn't work? No, no he did. Okay. But that was great and fun. He was dominant. Yeah. I guarantee you did. If he was 6'1", like Isaiah Thomas, you would have never heard of him. But but we'll, we'll just we'll just go from <laughs> there. That's just yeah, that for show. <laughs> so, right. Right. Yeah, let show. me just say this about LeBron. <laughs> okay. I, honestly, he has the most to lose in this situation. And if I can sit here, someone who's never played a drop in the NBA, if I can sit there and say, well, man, they didn't hire Magic Johnson to be the president. That's laughable. Oh, man, they didn't hire... <laughs> Rob Palika, an agent who's despised across the league <laughs> as general. That's laughable. Jeannie Buss has had no success. She's not her father. LeBron, ah, this is the perfect opportunity. I'm going to go to L.A. and play <laughs> for the Lakers. That's silly. Maybe yeah. that's a, this is a learning experience for him as well. You know, because it, when you think of the, we didn't really know the dysfunction until this year. <laughs> I mean, it's been bad. I'm not about to say no, no, but, but I'm saying, <laughs> I've been covering the Lakers for 10 years. But I'm saying Woo, as so bad problem. as it, I, it was really opened up this year. Like, it was, it was mm. rumors here and there, but it was really opened up. You really got a firsthand look at this. But, you know, I, I, I saw LeBron this weekend when our kids played the same tournament, and we embraced and talked for a second. I was just like, I bet you didn't think coming to L.A. was this much, you know, with so much more than basketball. And his eyes just got like, 
Man, yeah, like it's a lot. a lot coming out here. When I tell people, it's so much more than basketball playing in L.A. You know what I mean? You go out there, there's a problem. He's doing too many movies. He's doing this. His, his agent's on the plane, this, this, and that. There's so much more than just basketball here, and it takes a special person to be able to focus, lock back in, and, and be able to handle his business. Gravity. And that's true to the brand of what Dr. Buss built, which is I wanted it to be more business. than just basketball. Business. He wanted Showtime. And look, LeBron has wasted his finite years of playing basketball. That's a big with Lock and Wiley, joined now by Super Bowl champion and Fox Sports College football analyst Reggie Bush. All right, let's move to the NFL, where Donovan McNabb made some noise this weekend, telling TMZ that he deserves to be in the Hall of Fame. And he mildly questioned the qualifications of quarterbacks like Jim Kelly, who's already in, and Eli Manning, who is likely to get in. But McNabb really made waves when he brought up our good friend, Troy Aikman. I'm not hesitating on that. I am a Hall of Famer. My numbers speak for itself. My numbers are better than Troy Aikman, but he has Super Bowl rings and he's played with Hall of Famers as well. When you look at my numbers, yeah, but then they always want to add other stuff into right. it. And, you know, so like, how was he? A, was he an All Pro? Was he? Was he this? Uh, how many Super Bowl opportunities? This I don't realize how hard it is to get to the NFC Championship and to get there five times. Yeah, and yeah. Then make it to a Super Bowl is tough. This whole mm. thing's bizarre, man. <laughs> it, it's bizarre. I mean, he literally is like. That someone <laughs> asked the question, all pro, like, like that's a crazy question. It's like a, it, yeah. it's, you know, it's like a wife saying, you got any venereal diseases? <laughs> I can't believe you asked me that. Wait a minute. <laughs> Whoa, how did we get here? <laughs> I'm just saying. <laughs> Question. Yeah, I didn't yeah. know he said it to Tim Z though. I thought it was just like a 60 minute piece or something. Man, no. Tim Z, bro, come on. Yeah, I mean, look, don't confuse what I'm about to say. <laughs> with my love for Donovan McNabb, because I love me some Donovan McNabb. Even on the mm -hmm. field, I, I remember moments, vivid moments, especially being in Dallas, like, that dude's gonna be a Hall of Famer. That dude is next level. Mm -hmm. And here's the problem now. This story comes out, and for me, a non-Hall of Famer, no consideration, I get it. So I can clearly see <laughs> the forest, because <laughs> I'm not in one of them trees, right? If I have to look your numbers up, already strike one, brother. If I got to go dig to kind of get the case going, because mm -hmm. it has to be impact, it mm -hmm. has to be moments, mm -hmm. it has to be memories, it has to be a bold line of production, yes or no. When it's vague, I say you're not a Hall of Famer. But then you take me to another place where I understand where McNabb is coming from. He's basically saying some, some things I used to say before I got married, you know? Walk up to a lady, hey, I know I'm cuter than the ugliest dudes you ever dated, right? <laughs> Let me in. This, let me in the building. You know what I mean? Let me, let me talk to you. McNabb looking at that Hall of Fame. He's finding the worst guy he can find. And then Make is not even that guy, but he's trying to look at the bottom and basically say, in a different era with lesser numbers, y'all let them in. What it do? Can I get in? Well, I'm not even gonna go to the number standpoint because I I, I don't think this helps his case. No. Um, and I don't think you have to down, I don't think you have to throw shade at other guys too to make your case, right? Because just like you. Reach. I was a huge Donovan McNabb fan, and I still am to this day. And so for me to see him have to downplay other guys to make his case to say, I am a Hall of Famer, yep. um, to me, that's part of an identity crisis because I went through it when I, when I retired from the NFL. It was, okay, who am I now, right? Because I always thought that I always identified as a football player, right? And so when you retire, I always think athletes die twice. When you retire, you're trying to figure out, okay, who am I? I'm not this football player anymore. And... I, it took me some time to really understand that, okay, football is what I did, but it wasn't who I was, right? If you go to my social media page, you see my family, my kids, my wife, that's who I am. That's what represents me, right? I'm no longer that guy under the helmet anymore. And I think sometimes players will kind of look to these accolades or, or this Hall of Fame and say, this is going to elevate who I am. Nah, bro, you still Donovan McNabb, and you don't have to downplay them other dudes to be Donovan McNabb. Mm. Reggie, you just crushed it <laughs> and got to the true heart of this. Mm -hmm. All three of us, and you can go check my old writings, defending McNabb when Rush mm -hmm. Limbaugh questioned him, defending McNabb when the Shanahan's got after him. Mm -hmm. I was all in on Donovan McNabb. I'm real easy about the quarterback position. If you in any way remind me of John Elway, I love you. Mm. And Donovan McNabb was like, wow. Yeah. He's the... And it's unfortunate. Donovan McNabb is right. What he should be, I had Hall of Fame talent mm -hmm. and the possibility to be a Hall of Famer. But things didn't go my way. Mm -hmm. Because, again, it, it's real easy. Either you put up incredible numbers mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. or you win Super Bowls. In the, that's right. how you get in the yeah. Hall of Fame. Yeah, Kurt yeah, Warner. Yep. Yeah, that's exactly. how you... you, you 
Baller. You win MVP. You do. Yep. You do all, and you so Super Bowl. And so to sit here, Aikman played in the decade before you a different mm-hmm. brand of football. Wasn't Swagger. throwing it around the field. And he played with Emmitt and an offensive line and blah mm-hmm. blah blah. And so to even throw up, it's just a weak look to 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 disparage Jim Kelly. He made it to four straight Super Bowls. <laughs> Not four straight championship games. Like, they <laughs> made it to five straight championship games. Ke- Jim Kelly kept going one yeah. more level to yeah. this. Scott next. Norwood makes a field goal. Boom. He's got a Super Bowl. Right. But he went to four straight. That's unprecedented. Yeah. Right. These are the t- I don't, what record does Donovan McNabb hold? Yeah. And so, what, yeah. and so, again, Donovan, I get it. You had the talent yeah. to be a Hall of Famer, and you were close. If you could have mm-hmm. won a Super Bowl or two, you'd be right in there. Oh, yeah. But don't disparage these other guys, yeah. man. That's a bad look. And you still, well, listen, whether you become a Hall of Famer or not, people already got their mind up made about you, whether mm-hmm. they like you or whether they don't like you. So by you becoming that Hall of Famer, it's not going to somehow elevate who you are, right? Because I think this is just about him right now, right? And sometimes we get attached to those things, right? We get attached to those and we want to say, well, if I could have done this, because I felt like, hey, maybe there could have been a couple of times. I made the Pro Bowls, but I didn't. I didn't sit and soak about it. I just went to work the next year and use it as motivation. Mm. But Reggie, I, where I think you're right is, being a Hall of Famer is an identity. Yeah, it is. Hey, it is. I'm Donovan McNabb. Yeah. And the, well, I used to be the quarterback of the Philadelphia <laughs> right. Eagles. Right. Or, or I'm a Hall of Famer. I'm yeah. a gold jacket. I'm a Hall of Famer. Mm-hmm. That's an, And he's going to have to lean into family and other things. Mm-hmm. And broadcasting careers kind of gone sideways on it, too. Mm-hmm. He struggled. Whitlock and Wiley. What they do? Reggie Bush, Rick Buecher are back. Time to... Get anti-social. I got my Twitter off here from Rick. <laughs> Darnell Smith, what's popping out on those Twitter streets? What's going on, fellas? What up? We're going to start off with Bronny James Jr., Bronny, Bronny. who has managed to be in the spotlight much of his childhood despite not having any social media accounts. Well, last night, LeBron officially allowed his son to create an IG account saying, everyone welcome the heir to the throne, IG. I told him three years ago, the summer of 2019, I let him get one. Damn, time flies. <laughs> Anyways, let's get it, Bronny. Mm. P.S. Keep y'all hating asses off his comments or we pulling up. <laughs> what advice should LeBron give his son about social media? Pull up and wreck. Delete your account. <laughs> Come on, you delete his account? Yeah. Bro, he already got a million followers. He got a yeah, million I followers. I need a shout out, bro. He hit it. That's he, all I need is a shout out. I mean, good Lord, that's real. Yeah. Delete your account. Uh, no, 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 don't do that. Um, first, you got to teach this young kid to separate the signal from the noise. So there's going to be a lot of noise in your life. Do not try and squash all of the noise. Just figure out mm. what's good for you and the rest is ignore. You got to build up that system. Two, play with them features. I do it as well. Um, I only get comments now from people I follow or people that follow me. The rest of y'all join the party or you ain't part of this party. Simple as that. So, Bronny, uh, play with the features. Celebrities, people like him, could do that stuff. So. Uh, he's got to have a thick skin, I, yeah. I guess, because, listen, you, you're the son of LeBron James, the great King James. People going to want to throw shots at you to see if they can get you off your, off your block. So, yeah. um, But I will be watching because I have kids of my own, and I want to see how this goes mm. <laughs> So for, <laughs> for the future. Yeah. Heir to the throne. He didn't put any pressure on him, did he? For me, it's uh, don't think that that P.S. <laughs> is going to have any effect uh, whatsoever no when, effect. It comes right. to, mm. they, when it comes to they the They already haters. pulled up. Made it worse. And the mute button. <laughs> Mute button, greatest thing ever created. But that's Twitter. <laughs> that's Twitter. Instagram is different. I get that. I Instagram get that. Instagram is different. There's no. a better one. All you got to do is say, Bronny, the people you follow, that's the only people you're going to see comments from. The rest of them going to try and slide oh, your DM. I'm telling you, I just learned it. Oh, and watch Drake. Drake, can, Drake gets 5 million likes and views, 20 comments. Just the people he follow. Oh, that's I'm how t- Floyd Mayweather be doing that too. Yeah. I be wondering how he was doing oh, that. Oh, I got he, you. Oh, it's easy. Y'all out the game So you know what the answer is? Bronny. Listen to Marcellus Wiley. <laughs> he knows what's going on. I got you, young man. I don't Delete want you hurt. Out. I don't want you hurt. <laughs> <laughs> All, right, All right, right, next. Yeah, moving over to the gridiron, where the Oakland Raiders have added Antonio Brown and Vontaze Burford to the roster this offseason. Uh-oh. Mm-hmm. Now, they're reportedly adding Richie Incognito to the mix as well. Mm. People seem to think this will create a very volatile locker room. Mm. No. Let's play, let's play a little game here. Mm. I'm going to start with you, Whitlock. Oh, hell no. Who was more likely to become a <laughs> pro bowler? <laughs> More likely to be a distraction, or more likely to be suspended. Pro oh, bowler, distraction, God. suspended. It's kind of easy. It almost lines. Oh, up. no, distraction. I'm going to go with AB. Oh, wow. 
Oh, what? Uh, wow. <laughs> More likely to be a distraction. <laughs> 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 I'm going to go AB. So who's going pro bowl out of the mother? Richie, uh, Richie, Richie's a better player right now. Well, uh, yeah. right now. Incognito. Okay. And then suspended Vontez Burke. <laughs> Well, for a hit, yeah, or a legal hit or yeah, something. Yeah. I, I tell you one thing Richie ain't going to be doing no more. That little N-word pass, that ain't. <laughs> <laughs> With Vontaze? Not in Oakland. Oh, not in Oakland. Not in Oakland. That, that's gone. Um, <laughs> I got it. Pro Bowler Antonio Brown. Stop being Stop being that. That's obvious. Yeah. Suspended Vontaze. You just do what you do. And retire. Not even trade it. Retire. I think, distraction uh, was the other option. Oh, well, what are you changing? Distraction. Talk, distraction. <laughs> it's going to be him. He's going to try and get that N-word out one more time on one song. One of them songs going to come on in the weight room. He's going to try and slip it out. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Blue face, yeah. baby. It's coming, Rich. Well, here's the thing. So are we playing traded or not traded? Is that what Oh, traded is not. No. It's not. No. Pro Bowl, distraction, or suspension. Yeah, we're having to trade it. Yeah, I, I thought trade. we trade because I, I was gonna have to go Antonio Brown because you can't trade one of the other two. There's no value there, right? <laughs> I mean, right? 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 Good no, point. ultimately, I gotta go with Vontes is 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 the most likely to get suspended yep, because yep, yep. he's gonna lose his mind. And then when it comes, but here's the thing with Pro Bowl, it can't be Richie Incognito, even though he has been recently, because Quentin Nelson's got that on lockdown. Yeah. Good point. So every left guard in the league is now playing for one, <laughs> one spot. spot. Good point. Probably not going to be Richie. Which one is more most likely to go Raider? Just like crazy. I think, That's distraction. A B. I saw I, I saw <laughs> Richie take a baseball bat to a to somebody's car one time. Okay. That's going to be my vote for. That's it. I vote for him. That's too. all you seen. <laughs> that was enough. Uh, I'm going to agree with Marcellus. I'm going to go A-B for the Pro Bowler. Come on, y'all. Um, Vontez yeah, for the suspension. The and my boy think? Richie for the distraction. Yep. I hate boy Richie. Remember Derek There's all the options y'all gave me. Y'all didn't give me no other yeah. options. All right, question <laughs> of the day. Time now for Darnell's potato. You gave him a away. pass, Reggie? Did you give him a pass, too? <laughs> nah, hell no. Nah. I ain't never heard that. <laughs> All right, guys, so Gabrielle Union was on the Lele show with James Corden the other day and was asked about how D-Wade was handling life after retirement. Check this out. Dwayne recently retired yeah. from the NBA last month. Um, how's he doing? How's he acclimatizing to just he, life at home? He has no idea what's happening. He's never been to a car wash, and he's like, I love it there. I'm like, the car wash? <laughs> he's like, wow. Yes. He has no idea how much, like, milk costs. He's like, what is that, about $20? And I'm like, what kind of goat's blood milk are you... <laughs> No. <laughs> Goat's blood. Coming from someone who buys milk every week, I thought this was crazy to me, yeah. but you got, got, got a little money in your pocket. I want to ask you, right. does wealth remove you from reality? Uh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> what? Yes! No, I disagree, but let me hear why. Let me hear why. Because it just does. It you does just don't not. do the normal, everyday things that yeah, us what? normal and everyday I people I live at the do. car wash. I love going to car washes. I've been going to car wash my whole life. Yeah. So. Oh, okay, so hold on. When did it become like a normal person going to the car wash? Like, that's the baseline for <laughs> oh, being... Right. I know what I got going. Huh? I, know I go to the I car wash. Going. I'm a regular person. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That's who I am. When's the last time no you went detail. To the detail. No detail. Huh? When's the last time you went to the grocery store and shop? Yesterday. Memorial Day. Went and got some links. Got my little man some Cheetos. He riding around <laughs> in the shopping cart eating the Cheetos in the store. And Ralph, keeping it hood. Keeping it real. I don't drink milk because I'm lactose intolerant, so I don't know how much milk costs either. I will give you this, Whitlock. The first, when I got money, and obviously growing up broke half my life, I realized one thing. This world felt priced for the common man or poor people. I couldn't believe things were actually that cheap when I got money. Like, mm -hmm. you go to the store and you want some milk, it's two bucks. I'm like, two bucks? I got, uh, yeah. I, I got more than that. Yeah. You know what I mean? And it's weird to me, yeah. other than real estate, things are priced appropriately for like Everyday people, maybe gas. That's the only other thing. Gas is ridiculous. Yeah, right? but what? I do comment. Yeah. You're making my case about being removed from reality. <laughs> you do know that, like, they just came out with a study. 73% of Americans live check to check. Oh, that, I know why. And so uh, they got Jordans, though. <laughs> <laughs> they be buying the dumps. They got PlayStation 4s. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's why milk is two bucks, bro. PlayStation 4, how much that cost you? 200? I bet you they got that. See? Uh-huh. Uh-huh. I got quiet. You generalize. I, I don't... Anyway, go ahead. Warren, go Warren, ahead. Warren Buffett, Christy Walton, Tim Cook, they're all billionaires. Right. I think mm -hmm. uh, what it was, uh, it was said to me was money just makes you more of what you are. Yep. Mm. Whatever it is, in whatever Delusional. direction you're gonna go, I think I think D Wade <laughs> is just kind of out of touch, out and of touch. the NBA circle will also do that to you. Yeah. You're living in a bubble. If you're yeah. if you're staying at the Four Seasons all the time, mm -hmm. yeah, you don't necessarily have to be rich. You're just you're in that circle where everything's taken care of. Private for you. jets everywhere. 
Yeah. Exactly. And you exactly. the most famous up here, Reggie, so oh, I know oh, you had to deal with it. I ain't say you the most out of touch, but you are the one that if, if we had to vote, who <laughs> who gonna get mobbed when we yeah, go to eat right, right. is Reggie Bush, right? Tell me, when you're going to the car wash, you're, you're getting super deluxe, yeah. though. You are, right? I get a regular... Detail. No, for what? Because the car wash, the car gonna be dirty in two days. There's no mm. point to get a car... A, a wax still, and all that. A hundred bucks. Wash. If you'd said you oh, man, washed your own no car, sense. I'd be right there with you. Listen, I got mad at my barber when he tried to charge me 150 to come to my house to cut my hair. I was like... Oh, oh did y'all catch that part? Yes. My the, house, the, yeah. In my barber shop. Came, okay, you ain't even in my house. Oh, in my barber shop. First of all, you ain't got no hair, so I can't talk to you. But you done had your barber come to your house before at least once. Yes. Okay, yes. thank I'm, you. I'm rich. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but I'll, I paid him $40. Uh, <laughs> oh, man. Barber, I, just, I did get my car detailed. I, just, I think I paid him. Bro, I started using yeah. his new barber. He charged me $300 to come to the house. He know who Reggie Bush is. I said, no, nah, <laughs> right. I'm going to just meet you at the shop. <laughs> go wear that hat. That's what you're going to do. <laughs> Welcome to Speak for Yourself, the most fearless show in sports. Woodlock and Wiley, Reggie Bush is back with us. Let's move to Baltimore where Lamar Jackson's sophomore season with the Ravens is not off to a great start. The run first quarterback said that he, quote, sucked his first day of practice after discovering that the team was planning to run a completely new offense this year, a fact that he wasn't even aware of until he showed up at the facility. Uh, that's <sighs> a little bit of a red flag for me. <laughs> you? That there's some kind of communication breakdown within the Baltimore organization that the quarterback doesn't know what the plans are for the offense. I, I, I'm concerned about the, the coaching staff and Lamar. What's the communication like? Mm -hmm. it, it's a bit of a red flag. Um, I, I took it that way uh, at surface level. Then hearing more of the details, it, it seems like with the change of offensive coordinator, uh, there was an expectation that things would be status quo. Like they would just keep the same things the same. Got a young quarterback who struggled in the pocket. We all saw it. So we'll keep things the same. But through install, uh, through this process, they've kind of changed some things to really balance out their attack. They were just too one-dimensional. Mm -hmm. I love his response. So it's not a red flag because, one, it shows the maturity. You would deflect something like this if you knew that you were in the wrong. You can answer it appropriately like he did when he knows that, hey, it kind of caught me off guard. I'm struggling with it right now, but I'll be fine. But it also shows you his new expectation level in terms of how I'm going to play. Because John Harbaugh went out there and said all the quarterbacks are looking pretty good. So he tried to clean it up. But in reality, this guy is saying, no, I got a different level of expectation. <clears throat> so look at me as I try and strive for that instead of what I was last year. Uh, this one's a little tough for me because I feel like you should at least know, at the very least, you should know that your offense is going to change, especially if you're the quarterback because to me and every team I've been with, the quarterback and the offensive coordinator, they work together. They go hand in hand. They're, they're, they are an extension of each other. Um, the one thing that worries me about this team is that last year, uh, and for the most part, they've been a defensive-minded team. That defense carried them to the playoffs last year. Mm. Um, they don't have that same defense anymore. They got rid of a lot of those guys on defense that were dogs and, and that played really well for them. And so I'm kind of worried about the leadership, for one. You're putting a lot, a lot of your eggs in one basket on a quarterback who's still learning how to throw the football mm. um, and is, is having to change his mindset as a quarterback <laughs> to go from run first, as you said. <clears throat> so that part of it worries me. Uh, because now you, you, you're really dependent on one guy to, to, really, to really elevate his play from last year to s something significant that he's maybe never been before. Mm. I, 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 this is what I said draft day. In terms of everybody, oh, everybody wanted him to go in the first round, and I was like, no, I want him to go to the best situation. Mm -hmm. yeah. That's what's important. So Baltimore takes him at the end of the first round. Everybody's excited, and, oh, it's great. And I'm like, hey, man. Ozzie Newsome, who just drafted him, he's done. <laughs> yeah, this yeah. is over. Right. So everybody's off the hook. Yeah. If this doesn't work now, well, Ozzie drafted him. Mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. that that's, again, why I'm concerned. Like, hold on. They putting in an offense, and they gonna, it's going to be a more balanced passing attack. Yeah. And it's like, are they setting this dude up? Mm -hmm. John Harbaugh got his contract extension. Mm -hmm. He got his... Golden parachute. If this is it for him, he got two, three, four more years on his contract. Right. Yep. He got his money. And so now it's like, oh, we're going to put Lamar basically in harm's way. Yeah. We're, we're going yeah. to run a more <clears throat> traditional offense that he's saying, wow, caught him off guard. And again, I don't know who's to blame. Is Are he and Greg Roman, their new offensive coordinator, 
Are they communicating? Mm -hmm. did, did, did Lamar just go down to Florida and start working out with his mom again? <laughs> and there's been no communication? Man, we're locked. I'm just asking. <laughs> I mean, look, I'm just he did actually go down to Florida and start working again. And the process was, was happening up in Baltimore where, where they were working on the new offense, which was getting them out of harm's way. Did y'all watch the Chargers playoff game? against Lamar Jackson, mm -hmm. you can't go into another season doing that. Nope. So you have to make edits to this offense. I respect what they were doing, and maybe they kept them far removed from that uh, until they could finalize yeah. what these details I'd look like. Baltimore. And the other thing, oh, is, I hear that. The other thing is in that division, he might be the worst quarterback in that division because you got mm -hmm. Baker Mayfield, you got Big Ben who's been two, yeah, two yeah. Super Bowls, you got Andy Dalton. Um, so I'm wondering, like, wh where does he fit in in that quarterback class? Because you're playing to get some really good quarterbacks, and Baker looks like he's only getting better, and he's just, they just got a ton of weapons. So where does this Baltimore Ravens team fall? Because at the end of the day, it's about winning that division, right? Yeah. And so can Lamar Jackson be that quarterback for them to win that division? All right, before we go, I'd like to share a few thoughts on the passing of Bill Buckner, who played in the major leagues for 22 years but is remembered for a single act. Buckner died Monday at the age of 69. He battled dementia. Despite a career marked by accomplishment, including winning the 1980 National League batting title, we remember Buckner for his flub at first base in the 10th inning of the sixth game of the 1986 World Series. History says Buckner's error cost the Red Sox the championship. The facts say something quite different. Rich Gedman and Bob Stanley blew the game. Stanley threw a wild pitch and Gedman mishandled it, which allowed the Mets to tie the game. But none of it really matters. The Red Sox collectively blew the 1986 World Series, and no one should be singled out as the scapegoat. I admit, as a member of the media, sometimes I forget teams win and lose, not individuals. I forget the pain of playing poorly in a game that really matters. I played poorly in the biggest football game I ever played. In 1988, my Ball State Cardinals played Western Michigan for the Mid-American Conference Championship and the, and the right to play in the California Razor Bowl. Mm. 31 years later, I still remember the game and my poor play vividly. What happened to Bill Buckner in 1986 must have felt 100 times worse. Buckner was a husband, a father, a coach, a real estate developer, and an exceptional professional athlete. But the first paragraph of the obituaries written about him this week will focus on a single bad play. I guess that's the price of playing on America's biggest stage, the reality TV show called Sports. You're one mistake from infamy, one mistake from reducing your legacy to a single moment, one mistake from having to move your family to a new city for their peace of mind and safety. In 2008, Buckner threw out the first pitch at the Red Sox home opener. He reflected on two decades of heartache over a single error. He said, quote, I really had to forgive, not the fans of Boston per se, but I would have to say in my heart, I had to forgive the media for what they put me and my family through. The next time I want to complain about how much money modern professional athletes earn, I'm going to think of Bill Buckner and the consequences of failure in high profile sports. All right, let's move now to the NBA. Where the Bucks got bounced from the Eastern Conference Finals Saturday night with Giannis Antetokounmpo struggling as Milwaukee dropped four straight to Kawhi and the Raptors. After the loss, Bucks coach Mike Budenholzer had some advice for his star player, but Giannis was left speechless. We feel like he's going to get a lot better. He's at 24. Some guys are, you know, I don't want to say uh, they are who they are, and some of the great ones at 24 were just, and then they were the same at 30 and 32 and so on and so forth. Giannis, we feel like, has got a lot of room to grow. Uh, for both of you guys, I'm curious. You guys have talked a lot about how, um, at this point, you know, sometimes it takes experience. I'm wondering if now that you have some of that experience, if you see more validity to that point, or what you think about that now that you've gone through it. Oh, yeah. All right, uh, the question here is, can the Bucks win a championship with Giannis as their best player. Yes, uh, I believe in his growth. Uh, I believe in uh, the, the greatest mental attribute he seems to exude is the fact that he has that tenacity, that toughness, that, okay, like you were saying earlier, you can put more weight on him and he'll respond. From his rookie year to what we saw this year, every single major statistical category went up 
every single year except the three-point shooting, and that's where the struggles are, and that's where Toronto was able to exploit them in terms of just being a pure shooter. But take it home to my fandom and the Clippers and watching Blake Griffin uh, after his rookie year when he was out, and then he came back, and he, could, he was just a dash and go to the rim guy too, dunking on everybody, and then he was getting challenged within inner circles to the point where even President Obama at the time said, hey, can you hit an 18-footer? Now Blake Griffin is 36% from the three-point line. Like, he can evolve like him and other guys. I see that evolution yeah. occur. Yeah, and uh, to your point, I, I had this conversation with Blake, and what killed him is that people said he was just a dunker, and he wanted to prove them wrong. Yeah. And I believe that Giannis has that same thing. Having talked to people who have coached him, played with and against him, they all say he has the work ethic. Now, there is a lot of work to be done on that game because – it was pretty easy to figure out, I'm going to make him go left. I'm not going to let him come back right. I'll, take, I'll let him take that big left Euro step. And then once he picks up his dribble, mm. now he's stuck. So there is work to be done, but everybody tells me that he has the work ethic to do it. By the way, you guys know the backstory on the, on the press conference? Mm. So the woman reporter who asked the question had tweeted out something that he took exception to. Ah. So... He wasn't going to answer that question from the very beginning. And my, the unfortunate thing is the Bucks, somebody with the Bucks should have got to him and said, look, you got to be bigger than it, right? You got to Don't be LeBron James in 2011. Mm. Be bigger than it. Let me say this. You both compared him to Blake Griffin. And I think most people would say you can't win a championship with Blake Griffin as your best player. That's one. Two, I, I, I agree with both of you in terms of there's a lot of work to be done, and Kevin McHale's post game can't be picked up in any offseason. Dirk Nowitzki's ability to shoot can't be picked up in any offseason. I don't know what he's going to do on the offensive end. To me, he rem he's a seven-foot Dominique Wilkins, and Dominique Wilkins is a guy that you couldn't win a championship with as your best player. He's a great help defender. Uh, on the defensive end, and he great rebounder, and I get all that. I think he's a great number two. Right. He could be a seven-foot Scottie Pippen to someone, but someone has to come in. You pair him with the right guy off. Put put, and I don't know if Jimmy Butler would be better than Giannis, but he they need somebody they can throw the ball to in the final two minutes of the game and go get a bucket because it's not Giannis. And I don't think it's ever going to be. I love how you brought up Dirk because now there's some other parallels to Dirk. Dirk was uh, NBA MVP. Giannis probably wins the MVP this year. There was a time where when Dirk, remember, they got swept 1-8, and they were like, Dirk can never be the leader of a championship team. Dirk found a way. And Giannis can find a way as well. Uh, the narrative will be out there until he changes it that maybe you are not a guy who could lead us to a championship. You're MVP, and that's it. But I see his game being so well-rounded once he figures out I need to create distance. Today's NBA, what I love about Steph Curry is he just told all these guys, this is the new calculus, back up. Damian Lillard, who used to be a great shooter from 30 feet, took it to 35 feet. Mm -hmm. Like, you just got to back it up. That's well, all he has My thing... Marcellus and Rick is just like, with Dirk Nowitzki in the final two minutes, oh, he's going to go, he can go get you a bucket. I never see Giannis as that guy. Even if Giannis develops a three-point shot, he's still not a guy that, oh, I'm going to give it to him and he's going to go get me a bucket in well, the final minutes. Generally, I don't want anybody who's seven feet, and Kevin Durant has the same issue at times. Mm. If you're seven, te if seven, seven feet tall, it's uh, physics. That's a high dribble. Yeah. No matter how low you get, which means you're always susceptible to getting it picked. But when it comes to winning a championship, my best player has to be my hardest worker. I can find a guy who's a closer. I can find, I mean, the argument, Kyrie Irving was the closer. LeBron James was the centerpiece of the team. If you get the right pieces around him, and it does take special pieces, the right pieces. All right, welcome back. Uncle Jimmy's here. Your thoughts on the show so far, Uncle Jimmy? My thoughts on the show are I can clearly tell that you ain't never been married. <laughs> <laughs> what was that comment? Yes. Mar Mar Marcus, what was that? Uh, 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 the question that any woman <laughs> asked the man if you got a, a transmitted disease? My wife texted me immediately. <laughs> <laughs> Who the hell gonna tell the truth about that? Uh, for real. <laughs> oh, I just got tested. <laughs> <laughs> Let me see the paperwork. <laughs> All right, here's a highlight from our discussion earlier oh, about Kawhi Leonard. <laughs>
Did you guys know that I'm a gamer? Mm. Yeah. I bring this up because there's a video game about Toronto Raptors small forward Kawhi Leonard. The game is called Hitman 2 Silent Assassin. I know what's going on <laughs> with Locke. You know, them keys ain't gonna press themselves. You gotta write something, <laughs> huh, my dog? But can we remind ourselves yeah. who Kevin Durant is? Beat. All right, Uncle Jimmy. Best. What's your take on Kawhi Leonard? Well, you tell on yourself. My granddaddy said every time you open your mouth, a fool jump out. <laughs> That's what's happening with you right now, man. What? Man, Kawhi Leonard ain't no damn hit man to silent assassin. Mm. He ain't even no damn real video game. Mm. Now, Golden State, that's a real video game. True. That's 2K. Yeah. That's the standard that all video games is measured by. Hey, 2K. That's 2K, the video game. The Golden State Warriors. Yep. Huh. Everybody know, this is the rule. If you don't know how to play Madden, you don't know how to play 2K, you pass the stick. Give it up. Next man up. Yep. You ain't no real, you ain't no real Madden player. You ain't no real 2K player. <laughs> you just started playing, you got your first system three months ago. <laughs> Brand hey, bro, Uncle Jimmy been a gamer from day one. <laughs> Matter of fact, hold on, I'm gonna tell you who to ask about me. <laughs> ask your daddy about me. My daddy's passed, but go ahead. God Damn. bless you. You know, hey, you know what? Damn. Before he left, let me tell you what I beat him Before in. Before he left. I beat him in Pong. I beat him in Atari. Atari 2600. Ooh. Sega. Sega Genesis. Ooh. Nintendo. Ooh. Odyssey. Coleco. Coleco Vision. Odyssey, I had Odyssey. Coleco Vision. Smell a Vision. Oh, and television. Hey, I even beat him with the little handheld game that you go. <laughs> Remember the little game that you turn on and the players go, mm, beat him in that. <laughs> <laughs> hey, bro, game recognized game. Oh, man. Gotcha. Game See, recognized gamers, go ahead. Mm -hmm. Look here, man. You think it all started with Tech Mobile or Madden? Hut, 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 hut. Hey, bro, you know who invented the first football game? Oh. Your boy, Uncle Jimmy. Oh. <laughs> Promise you. Hey, man, I, hey, honest to goodness, man. I was in Kansas City. I asked one of my daddies one day. <laughs> I said, hey, man, would you, can I get a game? He handed me a piece of paper. <laughs> I thought he wanted me to list what game I wanted. He said, hell no. I said, here, play with this. Uh, I, made the first vi I made the first football game. Uh, That's how I made my lunch. Damn man. right. <laughs> I remember that. Huh? Yes. What you do? You hit it, go off the edge, boom. Uh -huh. Now you knock it off three times. Get it. You knock it off three you times. Want, you what you do? Walk you the field goal. Give me that. You ain't gonna make it. Oh, oh look at you. Oh man. Scott Norwood. Wait a minute. <laughs> Scott, yeah. Okay. That's it. I'm a, who I played for? Buffalo. You know that team. <laughs> hey man. You say Kawhi's a silent assassin. To me, if I'm gonna call him a video game, he look more like Silence the Hedgehog to me. <laughs> With those long ass cornrows and them big old long ass hands. Look, that look more like Kawhi. That look more like a video game. <laughs> That's and look, man, we all love Sonic the Hedgehog, but that can't compete with 2K. Mm, yeah. You know that. I hear you. Look, man, in the game, he gonna go up, dunk the ball. Draymond Green gonna block it. Penny's gonna go everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> hey, bro, after a couple three-pointers, you gonna hear the announcer say, is it the shoes? <laughs> He's on fire! <laughs> oh, hold on, bro. That's the NBA Jams reference right now. <laughs> <laughs> See, Uncle, Uncle Jimmy go down like that. All them games. Hey, oh, you know I'm all. Hey, bro, look. Let, let me tell you this. Let, let me break this down one more time. Uh-oh. Kawhi is like Game of Thrones. Game of Thrones? Yeah. Here we go. It damn sure ain't no Avengers. <laughs> <laughs> they might be good. Golden State. Them's the Avengers, mm. Iron Man, mm. Captain America, mm. that crazy one that loses mind, Draymond Green, I mean Hulk, uh, <laughs> the Black Panther. Hey man, that's Golden State. I don't care how good that guy is with the big old fingers, he ain't gonna beat the Avengers <laughs> and the Golden State Warriors. <laughs> All right, not bad, not bad, like not it. bad. The claw like is. All right, anyway, oh. I got the claw. Mm. Oh, Still at GOAT status. I only brought him up one point. Mm. Mm. Brought his all-time greatness up. He's made it. He's carried the team to the NBA Finals. Respect. Uh, but 25 job performance, 19 all-time greatness, 18 character, 19 authenticity, 81 GOAT. Uh, wow. Without winning the championship, all-time status goes up, huh? He made it to the Finals. Did you think they was going to the Finals? Mm. You just killed McNabb for all his Super Bowl <laughs> appearing butts and didn't win it. Uh, I had to go up in a couple categories. Job performance, yeah, he's playing great. Uh, character went up as well. Uh, he could be a GOAT. He's 79 right now. He could be a GOAT if you become a Clipper. You know how this goes. <laughs> <laughs>